So you've just applied to Welocalize, or maybe you're thinking about it, but now you're staring down the Okta and Junction exams and thinking, what did I just sign up for? Don't worry, I've been there. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through exactly how I passed both exams, what you can expect, the mistakes to avoid, and the secret tips that nobody is sharing. This is your full survival guide to becoming a freelance worker with Welocalize. First, let's start with the big picture, what is Welocalize, and why are so many people trying to work for them. Welocalize is a global company that hires freelance contributors for AI projects, search engine evaluation, language-based tasks, and other online remote work. It's one of the few companies that allows you to work from home, earn in dollars, and do tasks on your own schedule, in no degree, no prior experience, and no complex onboarding, as long as you can pass their exams. The Catch those exams aren't as easy as people think. You don't just click through them like a quiz and get hired. These assessments are used to filter out 90% of applicants. So if you want to actually pass and start earning, you've got to take it seriously, and that's exactly what we'll talk about today. Now the first thing you'll get after you're shortlisted is an invitation to access their internal systems, primarily through Okta and a platform called Junction. If you've never used Okta before, it's a secure login gateway. Basically, it manages your login credentials for all well-localized tools. Don't be alarmed if you see multiple codes, two-step verification, and email confirmations, it's all normal. Just make sure the email address you use to apply is accessible and verified. You'll likely be given login credentials or asked to create a password through a link sent by well-localized. After Okta, you'll be introduced to Junction, which is the platform where the actual assessment takes place. This is where it gets real. You'll typically see a timer, instructions, and modules to complete. Depending on the project, the exams could be language-based, search engine evaluation, rating tasks, or instruction following exercises. And yes, they all come with tight time limits. Here's the good news, everything you need to pass is already in front of you. The challenge isn't about having deep tech knowledge, it's about paying attention to details, following instructions exactly, and understanding what kind of logic they're testing you on. So let me break down the structure of the test. Most well assessments are broken into three core parts. Part 1, the instructions and guidelines. Part 2, sample tasks or practice tests. Part 3, the actual exam. Let's start with part 1, in the guidelines. This is where most people fail before they even begin. They rush past the guidelines, thinking it's just boring text, but Welocalize actually hides clues and scoring rules inside that document. Whether you're evaluating such intent, labeling sentiments, or following rating logic, the guidelines teach you exactly what they expect. My advice? Don't skim. Read it like your paycheck depends on it, because it does. Take notes, write down sample logic, and especially note any examples they give. If they say, rate this as neutral, write it down and ask yourself why. If you can understand their reasoning, you're already halfway to passing. Now on to part 2, the sample tasks. These are usually multiple choice, but they are crafted to trip you up. Some answers may seem correct on the surface, but one word in the question changes everything. One time I failed a practice task just because I missed the location context they asked about a service in the UK, but I rated a US-based result too highly. Big mistake. So here's what I did, I created a logic checklist. For every question, I asked myself, what's the intent of the task? What is the main goal of the user? Is the response accurate, relevant, when culturally appropriate? This checklist helped me stay consistent and avoid overthinking. If you'd like a copy of that logic checklist, let me know in the comments and I'll send it over. Then comes part 3, the main exam. This is timed, and you often cannot pause or go back, so focus is everything. Find a quiet place, get rid of distractions, and give yourself at least 90 minutes of undisturbed time. Also, have water and a notepad nearby, trust me, you'll need them. Now, a lot of people ask, what kind of questions do they ask? It depends on the project. For AI and linguistic tasks, you may be asked to classify intents, evaluate chatbot responses, or detect offensive content. For such evaluation, you'll rank pages based on how well they satisfy a given query. 
and for instruction following projects, you might just label content based on given rules, super detailed stuff. The trick is to think like the system. They don't want emotional guesses, they want consistent logic based on guidelines. So if you're unsure, go back to the principles they gave you. Don't assume. Don't guess. And definitely don't copy answers from the internet. We localize updates these questions regularly, and using old answer keys will only get you flagged or disqualified. Now let's talk about Okta issues, because I know some of you are dealing with login problems, expired links, or access errors. Here's the fix, always open Okta links in Chrome or Firefox, clear your cache, and avoid mobile if possible. Use the same email you applied with, and check your spam folder for missed activation codes. If all else fails, contact their support, but do it early, the exam timer won't wait for email replies. So what happens after you pass? First, congratulations, because that's a big deal. You'll be added to the active freelancer pool and your account will start showing available tasks. But don't get discouraged if it takes a few days or weeks before you get steady work. Some projects are seasonal, while others are waitlisted based on your language, location, or skill set. When tasks arrive, be ready. Work quality matters, and your performance is monitored. Some tasks pay per hour, some pay per task, and your accuracy score affects whether you get more work. So treat each job like it's your first interview again. Be sharp, consistent, and professional. And let's talk money, because I know that's why most people apply. We localize pay rates vary depending on the project and region. Some people make backslash dollar five backslash dollar ten per hour, others backslash dollar fifteen or more. But here's the real secret, the people who earn the most aren't necessarily the smartest, they're the most disciplined. They learn the system, build speed without losing quality, and they show up consistently. Now, if you're wondering whether it's worth it, yes, it is. Think about it, if you're getting paid to train AI from your home at your pace. You don't need a degree. You don't need to take client calls. You don't need to invest in courses or buy anything up front. You just need a laptop, the stable connection, and focus. So let's summarize everything. First, read the guidelines carefully. Highlight, take notes, and don't skim. Second, practice with full attention. Treat the sample tests like the real deal. Third, for the actual exam, stay calm, stay logical, and don't rush. Fourth, if you face octa or junction issues, troubleshoot immediately, don't wait. And finally, once you're in, maintain quality. That's how you get more tasks and higher pay. One last thing, avoid any platform or telegram group claiming to sell answers. They don't work, they get outdated quickly, and many of them are scams. Focus on learning the system instead. I passed because I trained my brain to think like the test, not because I looked for shortcuts. If you made it this far into the video, I already know you're serious about this. So here's what I want you to do, comment below with Welekala is ready if you're planning to take the exam soon or passed and working if you've already made it. I respond to every comment and I'd love to hear your progress. And if you found this video helpful, hit the like button, it tells YouTube that this info.